Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the arithmetic exception relating to the try-catch statements and exception handling in general. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website javacjava.com, select menu, Java OOP tutorials. Now I'm going to scroll down here to the try catch arithmetic exception. And the arithmetic exception class is commonly thrown when the result of a method in the math class is too large to fit into the resulting data type. Another common reason is a divide by zero exception. Now the arithmetic exception class is a subclass of runtime exception. The runtime exception class is an important class to mention because all of subclasses that are derived from arithmetic exception are referred to as unchecked exceptions. Now, I'll be discussing the topic of unchecked versus checked exceptions in a future tutorial there. Now this tutorial builds on concepts from the following tutorials, my exception handling try and catch tutorial and try catch index out of bounds tutorial. Let's go ahead and come down here. I like this source code. Hit Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen here. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really easy by right clicking and selecting new and shortcut. Okay, type in CMD next and finish. All right, let's go ahead and open that up. And one of the first things I'm going to do, and I always do, is type in Java C, and then this time I'm actually going to put in dash version. Okay? So I'm running Java C compiler 1.8.0 build 45, basically. But I'm basically concerned about this. This 8 here means that I'm running Java 8. So, um, however, if you get an error message when you type this in, like unrecognized command or something, Go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing a Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. And of course, there's going to be stuff in this tutorial that's specifically related to Java 8. So I'm going to do CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory. Backslash is, uh, tells it to go to the root. And by the way, if you have something higher than 8, like 9 or 10 or who knows what they're going to make in the future there, then you're all good with this tutorial as well. So make a directory called Java using the MD command. Now I already have the uh, Java folder, but if you don't, I'm going to create one for you. Change directories to the Java folder. I am going to make a folder here called try catch a D. Okay, let's go ahead and change directories to that folder. I'm on notepad try catch a e dot Java. All right. Go ahead and paste our source code in there. Come up here and save. All single class, try catch AE. I got my main method entry point here. I'm initializing three int primitive int type variables, x, y, and z, to x to zero, y to 12, and z to zero. And then in my first try statement, I'm saying x equals y divided by zero, right? 12 divided by zero should throw up a nice arithmetic exception there. And I'm catching arithmetic exception. And um, basically, the E is a reference variable to a class or an object of arithmetic exception type that gets thrown, that gets um, basically, it's looking at just any other reference variable, be looking at an object on the memory heap there, right? No different than this here. And I'll show you here in a second there. So, and then I'm displaying caught in arithmetic exception. All right, let's go ahead and run that to that point there. Let's clear our screen, Java C to compile this thing, Java to run it. So the first first thing we want to see here is caught an arithmetic exception. So that, that kind of uh, just picking right up where, we, where I left off with other tutorials there. Now the next thing I want to show you is um, you know, if I do something like z, right, which is int data type, and then I use the integer class dot max value, which is the uh, maximum positive value that the uh, primitive integer can possibly hold there, right, and then I say plus five, right, you'd think we'd get some sort of exception, and this has been a shortfall of Java for quite some time, and they're just now getting around to fixing some of these major issues, especially in, um, you know, when it comes to arithmetic there. 
So this, of course, is an expression, right? Now it doesn't, no exception, we won't, we will get an, integer, an integer overflow and we'll get data last, uh, lost. We'll print that to the line there. So here's what happens, right? Um, you know what I should do right above this? I'll just uh, system.out.println. just a little bit more sense. Let's come up here and save this and recompile this. Okay. So now I display to the console the maximum value for an integer data type, right? And this is the, of course, an integer class, but it's the same for a primitive int as this, this number right up here. Now if we try to add five to that, we get this number right here, and that's because some bits get shifted, stuff gets overflowed, and you know, and that's ultimately what you end up with there if you add five to the maximum value and you overflow it. But the most important thing to know is we need no exception, right? We don't know that that happened until you know all of a sudden some dude with a you know one of our billionaires his account goes from you know 214. Or maybe trillionaires, yeah. Let's see, one, two, three, two, three, yeah. Uh, two billion. So if once he gets, you know, over two point one four seven billion, basically, you know, and he makes his next five dollar deposit there, all of a sudden his account shows that he has, you know, negative two point one four billion. He took a swing, you know, almost four point three billion dollars the other direction. That's not good, right? But we didn't get any exception. You know, if we hadn't been paying attention and thinking, oh, integer is just so large, it's never going to do that, you know, we're going to end up with the data loss there. So the math class, right, the Java math class is a beautiful thing here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, well, actually, yeah, I'm going to go bring my browser back over here. I have the math class pulled up here to the Java 8 API, right? And the math class has all kinds of cool little functions, like for example, absolute value, add exact is the one that I'm that I'm dealing with here. So um, it returns an int type there. So returns the sum of its arguments, like int x, right, and int y, right. So if you pass in two arguments to this method, receives two parameters, both the primitive int type, and then just simply sums them together. Critical thing is that it throws an exception if the result overflows an int. Now, just to show you, here's the uh, Java 7 API, right? You can see by the number 7 up here in the URL. It didn't exist in the uh, in the 7, so this is something that they added here, right? And I'll show you here. We'll click on Add Exact, right? And um, it'll say since 1.8, 1.8 being Java 8, right? And you can see it throws arithmetic exception, okay? They also did like... Uh, um, overloaded version of it there, right, where you can throw in some longs as well to this. So um, that's that's a really something that's been needed for a long time. I can't tell you how many people have probably made their own methods just to, you know, if you're really, really anal about that, you'd want to make sure you don't overflow data there. You'll throw in a message and have it actually throw an exception, you know, if you're overflowing data. And I'll be sh I'll be going into a little bit about how you can create your own exceptions and throw them here in, in some near future tutorials there. Okay, so, um, add exact. We're looking at this particular version of the overloaded method with the int x and int y, right? And it throws arithmetic exception. And arithmetic exception is, um, what we were just trapping for up here on the divide by zero, right? So it can it can basically serve as a um, you know like a, a not too specific exception class there, right? It just kind of handles quite a bit. Not only does it handle a lot of stuff out of the math class, but the strict math class. It also handles um, as you can see some some of these things actually throw errors like uh, you know. A divide by zero throws errors, but it's really hit and miss, as you can see. The the when this expression is is um, evaluated here with the plus, you know, no exception, integer overflow, it does its work, and then that's that, right? So this is, that's been a huge problem. Okay, so um, let's just go down through the through a few more things here. 
I am going to add five to integer max value here after invoking the add exact class right here. And what we can tell is that is going to throw an, an arithmetic exception. Now the arithmetic exception sits right underneath runtime exception, which sits underneath exception, which is a subclass of throwable, right? So all these are derived from throwable and arithmetic exception is derived from runtime exception. Now I haven't gone into unchecked exceptions yet and checked exceptions, but I just want you to think of something there. There's two types of unchecked exceptions, one that are derived from the error class and the others are derived from the runtime exception. I really only care about runtime exception at the time, um, at the moment here. But an easy way to remember that an unchecked exception is derived from this runtime exception class is this has the, uh, the letters UN, so UN, right? That's an unchecked exception. That's how I would remember it starting off early on there. So runtime exceptions has unchecked exceptions. So, all right, just a little, little memory trick on that one there. All right, and you see there's no known subclasses on this here. Okay, let's go back to here. And one of the new things I wanna talk about is you know, in previous tutorials I said I was going to get around to what this is. So when an arithmetic exception is thrown and this matches, this will create a, um, an arithmetic exception object, right, that E points to. And it's, it's basically a throwable from the throwable class here. Let's come back up here uh, to the arithmetic exception stuff, right? And let's click on throwable. Throwable has these methods right these various different methods right here that we'll, we'll toy around with a few of these so of course any class that is derived from throwable will inherit these methods all the way down the the food chain the hierarchy there right so for example let's talk about Okay, so right here I just display to the console and when I catch this exception, caught an integer flow exception and I display, you know, the, what, what it was there, right? And then just this string literal displayed, what can we do with the reference variable E? So I just did basically like three different of the methods here. I don't want to overwhelm you guys too much there. A lot of these things you can go through yourself too if you want to see some more detailed stuff on there, but get localized message. All right, so get localized message here. Um, you'll notice that when you look at um, down here, like they don't document the constructors all the way down that they've inherited, but they do say methods inherited from object, right? Which is all these, and then methods inherited from java.lang.throwable, because of course throwable is like our godfather of the exception handling stuff here. Okay, so let's come back up here to throwable and we can get a better idea on say for example get localized message because that returns back a string so it's a nice easy one to demonstrate so get localized message creates a localized description of the throwable subclasses override it right um blah 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 blah, blah right you can read through all that if you have more time on this there so and there's get message too as well. Both of these basically return the same things, but you can actually override the um, get localized message. They recommend you do that. They don't recommend you do the, uh, the get message one up there. So when we display that to the console, we'll get just like a reference variable, which points to an object and then dot get localized message and then get message and then um, to string as well, right? So let's, let me go ahead and show you what those produced right there. So get localized mess. Oh, well, here we go. Caught an integer overflow of exception, and this is our max value of an integer plus five. Okay. So just to reiterate one more time, right? This did not catch it. It overflowed and produced value. We caught an integer here. Now we're just playing around with it here. So get localized message down here that displays integer overflow. Okay. Get message, same thing, inner flow integer overflow and then to string basically equals java.line.arithmetic exception inner integer overflow okay and then uh, print stack trace is basically the same thing that happens when we don't catch an exception it will well I shouldn't say the same thing that happens it prints the same thing right it doesn't like terminate the program in any way at all so print stack trace produces basically this right here okay 
This is what we normally get on there. All right. Um, then I go ahead and display my dashed lines down here. And what I'm doing here in this next line is I'm combining some stuff. Like for the, for the second parameter in here, for the add exact method here, I'm combining y divided by x. Now if we come back up here to y, 12, x is still zero at this point. I haven't manipulated x in any way there. So when you look at the statement, you're like, okay, if we think about it real quick there, integer max value, we're gonna add exact plus, well, let's take this first, y divided by x. All right, so that is going to, it's going to evaluate this first and we're going to get an arithmetic exception, right? But we're not entirely sure what will cause everything because what if we're adding that to the max value? What, what, um, what sort of arithmetic exception are we going to get? So I'm going to display get message to the console here. And then finally goodbye. So you can see we get the divide by zero over here and then goodbye. So our program never crashed out, right? We're just messing around with some of these methods based on this E object. Well, E reference variable pointing to an arithmetic exception type object. And so just displaying the message. So we caught the arithmetic exception and we can do other stuff based on the, uh, the get message there. Like for example, we could throw up something like, you know, checking for the message if it's exactly equal for the string dot equals um, divide by zero, right? We could display one message or have the program do something else, right? Um, in the case where, let's say for example, I come up here and I change this to one, right? And that'll now evaluate to like 12 divided by one. We're gonna get a completely different um, arithmetic get message down here, right? Let's go ahead and save this. Let's clear our screen. Okay, so you can see we got integer overflow this time around there. So we can do some um, some interesting stuff. You know, we could have checked for divide by zero. We could check for integer overflow and throw up various different messages. This is an example of, you know, a, a single statement that multiple different um, exceptions can be thrown from. And that's that's a very common thing in, in Java, actually, to have various different exceptions throwing from one particular statement there. So... Let's see, I think I covered quite a bit in this tutorial there. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that, get rid of that, and just leave you guys with some final thoughts on this. So, now it's worth mentioning again one more time that arithmetic exception is derived from runtime exception, which makes it an unchecked exception. And I'm just kind of going over the, that um, because when I do get to unchecked exceptions and checked exceptions, it's something that you really need to understand. So while I'm going over these individual exceptions, it really seems like an ideal opportunity to, to say, hey, that's an unchecked exception. That way it might you know, stick in your head a little bit more because it's really all memorization when it comes to this sort of stuff there. All right, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.